Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, we will talk about uh, the 2019 October SAT math exam uh, in section 3, question 12. Okay, so this is the question. Now, uh, a lot of students would uh, ask, uh, how do you do this question? Because it looks kind of complicated. And as we try to uh, understand this problem, I hope that there are at least a couple big ideas would come into your mind first as you just skim through the as you just skim through the uh, the, the problem uh, the expression right here so the first idea the first big simple idea that you should know is the idea of factoring because if you look at x squared minus 9 you know that x squared minus 9 it could be factored into x plus 3 x minus 3 and that is the reason it is not uh, a, uh, a coincidence that you also see x plus 3 and x minus 3 right next to the uh, the first fraction. So that's the first thing that you must be able to see. Okay. Now the second idea that you must be able to, uh, to discover as you are reading this is the idea of solving rational uh, equations. Okay, solving rational equations. Uh, and, uh, and one thing about solving rational equation is that uh, is a fraction, okay? In case this is the first time that you really listen to the word rational, it, uh, the word rational uh, comes from the word ratio, okay? We're not talking about people being rational or irrational, we're talking about ratio. So now one key thing about rational equation is that the denominator, the denominator cannot be zero and this is very very helpful in narrowing your choices and if you say I really have no clue at least you will be able to use this simple piece of understanding to make a educated guess uh, so you think about all right uh, the denominator denominator cannot be zero well what does it say then well it says that well, x cannot be, in this case, 3, because 3 minus 3 will be 0. That's not good at all. Uh, so x cannot be 3, in this case, and x cannot be negative 3 either, because uh, that would also make this fraction, uh, the fraction in the middle, uh, to have a denom denominator of 0. So with this said, we can easily tell that choice A and choice D cannot be the answer. They simply cannot be the answer, okay? So now, so after you discover that, oh, I need to know how to do factoring, I need to know how to solve rational equation. So now let's get to the meat of it, which is to solve it. Now, there are uh, two main approaches, I would say. Uh, one, it's better than the other. So the first one, the not so preferred one is that while well, you are dealing with uh, fractions, adding or subtracting, let's go ahead and make a common denominator. Okay, we can do that, uh, but that it's not really preferred because uh, ask yourself very honestly, do you like fractions? I don't, so we wonder if there's any other way that we can not deal with fractions, and there is. So this is the, uh, the strategy whenever you see uh, a rational equation and you would adopt this strategy to solve it. So the way we do it is that we multiply the whole equation, or you can think about uh, dividing on both sides by the common denominator or the soon to be common denominator so even though we are not thinking about common denominator or having one we still need to think about it so we are multiplying x plus 3 times x minus 3 on both sides and by doing so we can uh, eliminate all the denominators and i will show you how right now so don't forget that x plus 3 times x minus 3 is the same thing as x squared minus 9. That's number 1. Number 2, I also want you to know that as we multiply this this, this pair of parentheses into uh, the left-hand side, which is a subtraction, we are required to uh, we are required to distribute to both terms. So I'm going to show you how to do it properly. So let's go ahead and think about the first term. 
Now, if you look at the first term, uh, the denominator of the first term is essentially x plus 3 times x minus 3. And in this case, uh, what we are multiplying is the same thing as the denominator, which means we can cancel it out. So we will go ahead and cancel it out like this. So what is left is simply 4x squared. Okay, that's number one. Now, let's uh, erase a little bit right here, and then we think about, all right, we are going to distribute to the next term. What's going to happen? Well, first, we preserve the minus. The minus is still there. And then the x plus 3 and x plus 3 would cancel each other out, leaving just x, my x minus 3. So you have 2x times x minus 3. Okay, that's the thing left behind, and it will be multiplied by 2x. So you have 2x times parentheses x minus 3. So that's all the work we have to do for the, uh, for the, uh, for the left-hand side. And now we look at the right-hand side of the equation. So we think about, all right, basically same deal, same strategy. Uh, you have the x minus 3 uh, canceled out. So you have 1 times x plus 3, which is simply x plus 3. Okay, so this is the third concept that you will need to know, but you don't see it at the beginning, which is the solving of quadratic equation. I'm going to use a shorthand, shorthand right here, quadratic equation. Okay, so, uh, so you can see that there's a parenthesis in the middle, so you need to take care of that first. And, and, and be very careful, and this is where they embed this concept inside the rational equation. Do you know that you need to distribute the entire negative 2x into the parentheses? If you don't, then you're going to get it wrong. So make sure you know how to do that. So, so we have 4x squared, and then you distribute. So you have negative 2x times x, which is minus 2x squared, and then you would distribute to the next term, negative 2x times negative 3. So that makes it positive 6x. So this is very crucial. Are you aware of the minus? Okay, don't miss that. And right-hand side, we are not doing anything, so we keep writing it. Now we have a much simpler uh, look, and now we can combine like terms. So 4x minus 2x squared, we have 2x squared remaining. And then uh, you have an x right here, x right here. Let's move everything to the left. So we subtract x on both sides. So we have uh, plus 5x. And then we move the 3 over by subtracting 3 on both sides. So we you have uh, minus 3. So... Um, uh, and the right-hand side is equal to zero. And when you solve quadratic equations, make sure that the other side is always uh, equal to zero. Okay. Now, assuming that we can factor this very easily, so we will go ahead and do just that. Uh, we will have 2x and x because uh, as we do our FOIL, okay, so this is like a reverse FOIL, basically. You think about what times what would give you 2x squared, and it's a very simple answer that is, well, uh, 2x times x. So we're like, oh, cool. Now, the next two parts is going to be a little bit more challenging because you have a plus and you have a minus right here. So you think about, well, how are you going to deal with the sign right here? What are the signs in the parentheses? So because the last term right here, it's a minus. So it's going to be a plus or minus combination. But, but, but. Is it the plus on the left and minus on the right? Or is it a minus on the left and plus on the right? How do you know? Because it matters. It really matters. So, so in order to figure this one out, we will have to do our next step together with uh, the sign determination. So we think about, well, how are we going to get 3? Well, if you do the FOIL, okay, you do the very last step, uh, the last term, this times this would get you 3, right? So it's going to be like 1 times 3 or 3 times 1. But the placement of these two numbers is going to matter. So that is what makes it a little bit tricky. So, uh, so this is how I approach to this problem. Now, knowing that the sign is going to be plus or minus on either one, 
So let's go ahead and think about this. Just put a plus or minus right here, okay? So that we are not loading up our brain too much. And then we know that this is 2x and x, so let's go ahead and put, put 2 and 1 right here. And then uh, for the last two numbers right here, we know it's going to be uh, 3 and 1. Now, why is it necessary to show everything in front of you is because you want to use your imagination, and this is really imagination and mental math. You want to have some kind of a combination of numbers multiplying. It could be this, or it could be this. But somehow, after you multiply them, because that's how you do the uh, uh, the outer and the inner, right? So after you multiply these two numbers, okay, one on each side, you are going to get uh, you're going to get uh, two numbers. And since one is positive, one is negative, so you know it's a subtraction. So to boil down to a simple question, that is, what two numbers you're going to multiply, okay, or what two sets of numbers you're going to multiply, so that you will have a difference because you're doing subtraction, uh, you will have a difference of. Uh, you have a difference of positive five. Now, if you are good in mental math, okay, you can see this very easily. So I'm going to show you the easy one first. You will have three times two, which is six. And you have 1 times 1, which is 1. So uh, and if you want to get a positive 5, you would want to do plus 6 minus 1. Now, how would that help? Because it allows us to know one thing, that you want a 2 to multiply by the 3. So the 2 is already right here, and you want it to multiply by 3. So you put a 3 right here, so that as you do your outer uh, in the FOIL step, uh, you would get 2 times 3, uh, 2x times 3, which is 6x, okay? And uh, since you want to get a positive 6, that means the 3 should be positive, not negative, okay? And, uh, and then you want to get a minus 1, so there's only one slot left, so you put the 1 right, one right there, and, uh, and this would be a negative 1, so 2x minus 1, so you do your... Uh, inner and outer. So let's just do a cross check, all right? Just in case. This is plus 6x. The inner would be minus x. And you combine these two like terms together. Hey, that's your positive 5x. That's this. So that's how we know we have factored properly. So, uh, so let's go ahead and you erase these works so that we have more room to write. So the zero is still on the right. And by doing so, we are allowed to write these two mathematical statements. All right, and then we can go ahead easily to solve for x. So x is equal to uh, 1 half, and x is equal to negative 3. However, we know that x cannot be negative 3, since if x is negative 3, this fraction will become, uh, this denominator will be zero, and it will become undefined. And that's also the reason why we cross out minus three and three at the very beginning. So your choice is very apparent, obvious. C is your answer, okay? So uh, if you like this video, please uh, press like, uh, and uh, that would uh, definitely encourage me to do more videos like this. If you have any comment, please make sure you leave a comment down there. And also, uh, if you like this video and you would like to watch more videos, uh, please subscribe. Uh, and if you have any specific question uh, that you want, to address, want me to address, you are more than welcome to email me at uh, goodacademics at gmail.com. It is goodacademics at gmail.com. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.